Hello and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras here with ILTV's Morning Brief. <laughs> Hundreds of demonstrators enraged over the shooting death of Iyad Khalak marching through the streets of East Jerusalem Sunday night on the way to his funeral. The 32-year-old Khalak's body draped in Palestinian flags and carried in an open casket. The procession, heading for the so-called jihadist cemetery, while chanting nationalist slogans against Israel and some chanting against Jews. But despite the chanting and the burial plot, there's no evidence that Khalak had anything to do with jihad or nationalist motives. According to initial investigations, Khalak had been killed in a tragic misunderstanding as he passed through the old city's Lion's Gate. Israeli officials vowing a full investigation and apologizing to the family. Khalak was reportedly on his way to a special needs education center at the time of the shooting. Holding what may have been his cell phone, Israeli police allegedly believed him to be armed and called on him to stop. But Khalak's parents and caregiver explained that he suffered from an autism-like disability and that he ran away as he did not understand the orders. Finally, seeking refuge in a nearby garbage room, Khalak was shot dead. It's not yet clear if he was shot before or after entering this room. The officers involved are under house arrest while the investigation continues. One after the other, the school doors are closing. Now, thousands of students and school staff are added to the list of people in the education system sent back into isolation after several in Be'er Sheva, Chadera, and Jerusalem tested positive for coronavirus. But it's not just schools that are being hit. In a Sunday cabinet meeting, Netanyahu once again sounding the alarm, saying the deadly virus is not behind us, pleading for cooperation from the public and public figures. Announcing an even further boost in testing to some 15,000 people per day, newly appointed Health Minister Yuli Edelstein saying that the rate of positive results is now five times higher than several days ago, warning about the consequences of negligence. The epicenter for the surge in new cases sat at the Jerusalem School of Gymnasia Rechavia over the weekend. But since Saturday, six other schools around the country shut their doors as cases are found in their midst. Doctors will now be allowed to direct patients to receive testing amid claims Israelis seeking the tests were being turned away or told that it would take days. Now, even those who test negative must remain in 14-day quarantine if exposed to a virus patient or displaying symptoms of COVID-19. On Sunday evening, the health ministry saying the death toll has risen to 285 with another fatality. Now, even with a pandemic, there seems to be a silver lining, as more than 51% of Israeli smokers aged 18 to 24 are now seriously considering quitting. And at the very least, nearly half of all Israeli smokers are also reportedly smoking less than usual. This, according to the Israel Cancer Association on Sunday, as the world marks International No Tobacco Day where the World Health Organization focuses on protecting teens and young adults from the tobacco industry's marketing and manipulations. But it's not just marketing and manipulations that has Israelis giving up their cigarettes. Continually rising prices and now the coronavirus are mainly to blame. Habitual smoking is a main source of comorbidity with the virus, which heavily affects victims' breathing. And already at least 80,000 Israelis have died in the last decade from smoking-related illnesses. That's over 8,000 deaths per year, or 22 deaths in Israel alone every single day. That's all for now, but for more news from Israel, remember to like ILTV on Facebook and on Instagram, and to subscribe to us on YouTube. I'm Aaron Porras, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.